Okay, so to continue, we're going to add some notifications to our website. So in order to do that, we're going to need a database table to host those notifications. So let me come back here to my text editor and explain that we the two tables that we require in order to have notifications. So of course, we'll need a notifications table and it's going to contain the following uh, columns here. So the first one is the ID, just the primary index, which is required, of course. And then the user ID. Now, this is going to be the ID of the person that has created the notification. Okay. So the idea is that if, for example, let me come here and uh, let's say, for example, I like uh, this post. So I'm the one creating a notification. So every activity on the website will be accompanied by a notification being created. So if I like this post, a notification will be created. If I comment on this post, a notification will be created. So the user ID is going to be the ID of the current user at that time. And then we're going to save the activity. So the activity will be, is it a like, is it a comment, or is it a follow? And then we're going to have the content ID saved as well of whatever the user is interacting with. So in our case, where let's say I like this post, uh, the ID, the post ID is going to be saved in the content ID here. And then the content type or the content owner. So because I can like some content that is not mine, I'll just put the content owner there. And the owner is determined by the user ID of that content. Okay, so the user ID of the content, the content ID itself, and then the content type. So is that a post? Is it a comment or is it a profile? and then the date of when this happened. So with this information, we can uh, easily create a string that goes as follows. Let's say somebody uh, liked a post. So we can easily create a, uh, a string that says this person, whatever this person is, we can query who this user ID belongs to. Say this person liked uh this post okay and then the owner is how we're going to know who uh who needs to know this notification because if i like a post here i don't need to know about it because i'm the one that has liked the post so we need a way to let the other person know that somebody has liked their post. And that's why we're going to save the owner's ID. Okay, so that's how it is. Now, there are times when, uh, for example, uh, let's say I go to, let me go to this other profile here and let me go to the comment section here. So as you can see, there's this user that has commented on this particular post. However, this post does not belong to them. So if other people comment on this post, this user is not going to be notified because they don't own this post right here. However, this is where this table comes in, media I follow. So in here, we're going to record a uh, Let's, for example, you don't like in this case of this user, this user does not own this post. So if she comments here, she automatically has to start following this particular post in order to get notified if anything happens. So once she comments on something like this that doesn't belong to her, a record will be kept in media I follow. Okay. 
So of course we need the ID column, the user ID of whoever it is that's actually doing the activity. And then the content ID of what she is following at this point, which is the uh, post. And then the content type and disabled. Now disabled here is important because sometimes you might want to uh, unfollow a post because maybe you're getting notifications that you don't want to so you can disable the following of that content and then the date now the date is important because sometimes as time goes uh, obviously the media i follow uh, is going to increase how many how much content you follow is going to increase over time because every day you are liking and commenting on stuff so the date is important because we can use it to limit uh, <clears throat> to limit how much I, how many notifications I want to get. For example, let's say if I want to select just notifications for the past one month, then I can limit which media I follow. I can limit the query to just the media I have followed this past month. And then I can do the same for the notifications using the date. Okay, so let's quickly create two tables here. Let me go to my browser. So in our uh, table here, we're going to create a new table. So the first one is notification. Of course, notifications. So how many do we need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have one, two, three, four. So let's add three more. Go. ID, user ID, there is activity. And this content ID. And then we have content owner. Of course, I know here it's the date at the end. And what's the other one? Content type. There we go. Okay, so the data type here, ID will be big int because will be this will be the busiest table. So it's going to need a lot of columns. Make sure it's on auto increment and primary index. User ID big int as well. The activity will be a variable character and we can see how many we need because we have a limit here. The longest is comment and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So just to be safe, we're just going to put it at 10. 10 characters, content ID, of course, big int content owner big int content type again that is the highest but to be safe we'll put it 10 and then date time okay so save great so now let's add some indexes on all these items uh except the activity just the content id content owner index and the date okay great so next table now let's go to new and that's media or we can say instead of media, we can just say content underscore I underscore follow. So content I follow. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six, one, two, three, four. So let's add two here. Go. So again, ID 
user ID. Uh, content ID, content type. Let me just copy that. Disabled. And then date. So of course here this one is date time. Disabled is tiny int because we just want zero and one. So length of one. Content type, uh, variable character of 10. Content ID big int, big int for user ID, big int for ID, auto increment for ID, primary index. All right. And we could add a default value for disabled, which will be as defined, we'll put a zero because zero means it's not disabled. And then we can save. As usual, let's add some indexes. Indexes for user ID, content ID, disabled, and date. All right, great. So, so far, so good. We have two more uh, tables here. So, let's see how we can use these tables in the next video.